Right, so now we're going to take a look at this problem where we're going to find the solution of the heat conduction problem. So here's our partial differential equation. It is in the form that we want. So remember, you want your uh, partial differential equation to be in this standard form. U sub t is equal to alpha square u sub x x, where u uh, alpha square is the uh, diffusivity constant. So in that case, that happens to be 100 in this case. So alpha squared is going to be 100. And you're given the boundary conditions uh, right here. Both ends are held at zero. And of course, uh, we're looking at x equals zero to x equals L. So we know L is also one. So that's going to be this value right here. So x equals zero to x equals L. And also we have the initial condition. So we know up to the boundary condition, our solution has the form U of xt. So U is the temperature, the function uh, of the variable x and t. The solution is this sum starting from n equals one to infinity of sine, um, sorry, I missed my coefficient bn, bn times sine of n pi x over l times e to the power of negative alpha square n square pi square all over l square times t. So that's the solution satisfying up to the boundary conditions. Now we can plug in our l value and alpha squared. So we can plug these in into our a solution. So by subbing those in, we have our solution that looks like the sum starting from one to infinity b sub n sine of n pi x sin l is since l is one times e to the alpha square is 100. So this is negative 100 times n square pi square times t. Now we can impose the initial condition. So in this problem, our initial condition is right here. So we have u of x comma zero when t is zero. You have the sum starting from n equals one to infinity bn sine of n pi x. When you plug in zero for t, the exponential term will disappear because e to the zero the power, that would be one. So this is what we have. And we're gonna set this equal to our function, um, this function right here, that's your f of x. So this is gonna be equal to sine of two pi x minus sine of five pi x. So that's our uh, initial temperature. So now um, we don't have to compute Bn by using the formula we've seen in class. What we're going to do, we're going to equate the coefficient because sine is its own Fourier series. So here's how we're gonna expand the left-hand side. So this sum, I'm going to write out a few terms and then you'll see how it looks like. So if n equals one, you have V1 sine of n is one. So that's pi x plus when n equals two, you have V sub two sine of two pi x. When n equals three, you have V sub three sine of three pi x. Plus when n equals four, you have V sub four sine of four pi x plus, I'm gonna write down one more term, uh, b5, so that's n equals five. So b5 sine of five pi x plus, of course there are more terms since this is infinite sum, is equal to the function which I have right here on the right hand side, that's our f of x. So this is sine of two pi x minus sine of five pi x. All right, so now we're going to quit the coefficient to figure out these uh, constants, bn. Now, notice that this is your uh, value for b2. So these two functions are the same, so I can equate their coefficient. So I know b2 has to be 1. And then the next term that appears on the right-hand side is this guy right here. When n equals 5, that matches this one right here. So b5 we get b5 happens to be negative one. That's the coefficient of sine of five pi x on the right-hand side. And the rest, they don't have any terms on the right-hand side. For example, this one, it doesn't appear on the right-hand side, this one as well, and this one, and there are infinitely many more. So all of those guys, so b1, b3, b4, and if you keep going, they're all gonna be zero. 
So all of these coefficients are zero. That means they do not appear in our solution. So our solution will only contain n equals two, so b sub two, and then n equals five, b sub five. So now if you go ahead and write out the solution, so we know that's the solution. So let's go ahead and write that out. So our u sub x, u of x t is equal to, so only b sub two. So when n equals two, we have a solution. So we have b sub two, that's one times sine of um, two pi x times the exponential negative 100 square n square, so n is 2 in this case, so we're going to plug that in, 2 square pi square times t, plus the next term that we're going to have in our solution is n equals 5. So we'll sub that in into our formula right here. So as you can see, I'm subbing it in right here for n. So our solution only has two terms. So this would be negative 1, because b sub 5 is negative 1, times sine of 5 pi x times e to the negative 100 times 5 squared, because then it's 5 pi squared times t. And then you just clear this out. So that is really it. So your solution would be sine of 2 pi x e to the negative. So if we do 2 squared, that's 4 times, I'm sorry, I made a mistake right here. It should be just 100. Uh, so it'll be uh, 200 times pi squared times t. And the last one we have negative. So it'll be negative sine of 5 pi x times e to the 100 um, times 5, that's 25. So that's 2,500 times pi squared times t. So that will be your solution that will satisfy this given boundary condition and of course the initial condition.